Now, let's jump into radio and let's take a look at what we can do. But before we do that, I got to kind of lay out that foundation of where we were in the world of optical. All right? Because one of the great bits about the 600 EXRT system is that the speed light is more than happy to work with all of your existing gear that can be a master or a slave on an optical basis. Now prior to the introduction of the 600 where we had radio for the first time ever in the history of speed lighting, we never talked about it being optical wireless. Okay, we just talked about it being wireless. So for those of us who don't know, let me just set the record straight. In a speed light or a pop-up flash, the optical transmitter is the flash tube. Many of us casually assume that because of the old transmitter, the STE2, which has a, a tiny pop-up size flash tube behind a thick piece of plastic, that it's infrared, all right? Well, the reason that plastic is there on the STE2 is so that when that flash tube fires in the hot shoe, you're not throwing on-camera flash into your shot and killing your shadows. But in reality, all of these flashes and pop-ups are communicating through the flash tube. The flash tube is the transmitter. You can prove that to yourself. Put a speed light in the hot shoe, set it up as a master, and put your hand over the head, block the flash tube, and you will cause the slave to be blinded. It's not the big red autofocus assist panel down below. This has created a lot of confusion because they said, oh, infrared, okay, it must be that red thing down below. <laughs> and then people don't realize the importance, and I'll show you a slide in a few frames, the importance of making sure that the master's signal is going in the direction of the slaves itself. All right, so the flash tube is the optical transmitter, and then the slaves, have their sensor right on the front. This is also critical information. So if you've got a 600EX, your slave sensor is basically right there where the external metering sensor sits. It's right above the red autofocus assist light panel. On the 580EX, again, same thing, the black panel right in the middle. 430EX, it's right under the head. On the original model of the 580EX, it's there as well. It is really, really important to understand. I've heard so many times people say, you know what? I use these ETTL radio triggers that I buy for hundreds of dollars a piece because the built-in system doesn't work. I can assure you through hundreds of shoots outdoors in bright California sunlight that if you know this one little trick, you will get a 100% success rate with the built-in radio or the built-in optical system. So here's the big secret. The big secret is, if you look at the sun, you get blinded, all right? You have to turn the body of the slave away from the sun, and you have to turn the body of the slave so that it faces the master, all right? If you can, turn the head of the master so that it faces the slaves. In this case, I've got one slave. It's easy to turn the master, okay? But here's another thing to know. It is perfectly okay in optical wireless if your slaves are positioned in your shoot so that they're looking at the sun and they're blinded. Turn the body of the slaves away from the sun, use one of these long ETTL cords, and move the master to a spot where the slaves can look away from the sun at the master. Put your master on a little light stand and move it around so that your slaves can see it. There's nothing in the rule book that says that the master has to be in the hot shoe. The rule book says the master has to be connected to the hot shoe. But if you have an ETTL cord, and therein is the fine print, it has to be an ETTL cord, not just a generic PC sync cord. It has to have that foot that matches up with the Canon speed light, and it has to have the hot shoe that matches the speed light or the hot shoe on your camera. But you can move the master and turn those slaves away so that they're not blinded by the sun. You do those two things, and you don't need any kind of radio triggers other than the one we're here to talk about tonight. Because I'll confess, there are many times where that line of sight requirement in the optical system, the need to face the body of the slaves this way and the heads that way, and then move the master on a cord over there, I can, I'm happy to do all of that if that's what it takes to get the shot to work. But I got to tell you, now that I have radio, I am so grateful because 
In the case of radio, it sprays everywhere. So here's the 600 as a master, here's the ST3RT as a, a master, and they just send that radio signal everywhere. It doesn't matter which way they're pointing. It's radio, okay? It goes everywhere. And likewise, the 600, when it's a radio slave, it's not going to be blinded by the sun because we're not using these sensors on the front. It's literally the antenna on the inside of the speed light that's capturing <coughs> the signal. So all of a sudden, the need to have that direct line of sight conne connection or the need to somehow, if you're a creative wedding shooter, to bounce the master's signal off the mirror and around the pillar and off the mother-in-law's dress over to the light over here, you don't have to think that way anymore. You just think, all right, I'm going to be the photographer because radio frees us up from that line of sight connection. Now, I'll say this about the, the cords, because I get this question a lot. Somebody says, well, I'm upgrading to the new system, but I don't want to put a $300 transmitter in my hot shoe right now, or I don't want to put a $600 speed light in the hot shoe, or a $550 speed light now in the case of current prices. And so the radio mechanisms also work on those ETTL cords. So you got two 600s, great. You put one on this side through your umbrella or whatever your modifier is, and it's going to be happy to talk by radio to the slave that's somewhere else on that set, okay? So you, again, don't have to have the radio transmitter connected to the hot shoe, but in this case, you are in a shoot. You're not going to do this at a wedding where you're dragging a 30-foot piece of cable around between the camera and the speed light. So I'm just going to run through a laundry list. There's really no pretty pictures to show you, um, but I'm going to run through this laundry list. In terms of radio, there is a maximum of 16 between masters, plural, between masters and slaves, a maximum of 16 units, okay? This is a two-way system. Optical is really a one-way system. The master sends the signal out there, maybe the slaves are paying attention and maybe they're not. The master has no way of knowing, kind of like being a parent, okay? But in this system with radio, the slaves are actually talking back to the master, which is why there's the 16 unit limitation, okay? Now one of the great things about the fact that it's a two-way communication stream, you can set your master, if you're shooting multiple off-camera lights, and I've got A lights and B lights and C lights and D lights and E lights, my master will show me, either visually and or audibly, which of those slave groups is recycled. I think that is brilliant. I can do it by beep, or I can have, I'll have the optical icon as well to say, and so the system now provides positive confirmation that slaves are recycled. You got three speed lights in group B, the master doesn't report them as being recycled until all three are checked in. And that's a function of the fact that it's this two-way radio system. The master can trigger cameras that are connected to slaves. We'll take a, little, a, a short look at that later in the program tonight. So you can use the master camera to fire remotes connected to slaves. And those slave flashes, by the way, can either flash or they can just be triggering mechanisms. And likewise, if you want, you can go to a slave and actually go reciprocally. And actually, from the vantage point of a slave, you could fire the master camera. All right, so that, that provides, rather, opportunities if you're a wildlife photographer or, dare I say, a wedding photographer, opportunities to position remote cameras for special shots and then go create images that we otherwise wouldn't get with gear that we've got basically parked in the hot shoe of our camera, okay? Yep. Okay, so just make sure I got it, you know, so that everybody can hear. Um, you said 16 units is a lot, and I'm just, I've got that Cheshire cat grin because I've owned, the most I've ever fought, fired at any one time was 12, and um, so you're right, Six for me to say that 16 is a lot. I frankly don't know what happens if you fire 17. Does it, your question, does it shut down the whole system, or does it just number 17 not fire? I don't know, I'm gonna guess. We could do it tonight. If you all want to turn on your 600s afterwards, we could answer that question. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Maybe they all, they, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. Um, my guess would be that number 17 doesn't fire. Okay. 
Right, right, right. I, I do know when we talk about the link light, the system absolutely knows what master turned on first and which masters came on second and third. Because, and when we talk about the link light and we talk about submasters, if you shut off the primary master, the, sub -mas the first submaster now becomes the primary master. So I'm going to guess that it's going to keep track of who turned on and what sequence, and maybe it just doesn't fire number 17. Great question, uh, you know. Great blog article, too. There we go. Thanks for asking. Thanks for asking. Okay. So let's take a look now at, we're just going to cycle through. We looked in a non-wireless mode at ETTL and manual and multi and external auto and external manual. Now I want to run through the menu system in wireless mode. So one of the things to know is that we have the dedicated wireless button. What a gift that is. Okay, what a gift that is. On the 580EX, the original one, we had the off master slave lever. And then on the 580EX2, so they could add the weather sealing capabilities, which was a big improvement in speed lights then. We've got basically the hidden functionality because they took away the lever and they used the zoom button with the sideways flashbulb icon hinted next to it as being the gateway. Press and hold the zoom button for three seconds on your 580EX2, and that's how you gain access to the speed light wireless system. And then you've got to push and say master on and do these other things. On this system, you just keep pushing the dedicated button, and basically it's going to cycle through the five options. So whether you call it non-wireless or solo speed light or whatever name you want to call it, it's going to start there and then it's going to, you hit it and it's going to go to Radio Master and then Radio Slave. And I'm going to show you all the icons so you know where to look and what to look for. And then it'll switch from Radio to Optical Master, Optical Slave. You tap it a fifth time, it's just going to cycle through there and keep going, all right? So here is the Radio icon. It's basically a lollipop with parentheses around it, okay? <laughs> My description, not Canon's, all right? It's in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. That's the radio icon. It's a radio antenna with electromagnetic waves, but I prefer to think in lollipops, all right? You hit, so you hit the, the wireless button one time, radio master. You're going to see that signal. You hit it again, radio slave. You'll still see that signal. You hit it a third time, you go to <laughs> optical master, and so we get the sort of familiar sideways flash bolt. And that is the symbol for optical wireless. Okay? So one of the things we need to be mindful of with our 600s is are we in radio mode or are we in optical mode? And the place that we look at on the screen is that upper right hand corner. Now, in terms of looking at it and saying, is this a master or is this a slave? It says master or slave in exactly the same spot on the LCD. I love that. On the 580, they were next to each other. Not a big problem. But you know what? Under the stress of a real world shoot, when you're really going after it, and gear just is finding new ways to continue to make your life a challenge, having things like this where the icons just replace themselves with the other side of the coin, so, so helpful. Now, what else do you notice up on that screen? Do you see how the screen backlight has changed color? OK. This is one of the new features of the LCD. And you can go to Personal Function 4. Personal functions are basically custom functions that apply only to one specific model. And in my case, I set Personal Function 4 so that when my speed light is a slave, it's in orange. And when my speed light is a master or in just regular non-wireless mode, it's green. OK, so here we have all four options. The top row, right and left, left and right, radio master, radio slave. The bottom row is optical. So I'm looking at two things in each screen. First, I'm looking to see whether it's radio icon there or optical icon down below. And then I'm looking to see whether it says master or whether it says slave. You don't have to have your slave screens change color if you don't want to. And you might find, for instance, that you prefer to look at the orange screen all the time. 
So you can set up your speed light that way in the personal functions as well. Can you show uh, how you change the color? So I, you go to, in the, when we talk about custom functions, so what you're going to do is you're going to press and hold down that leftmost button in any mode where it says okay. Zoom CFN. And then when you press and hold that, you'll see that the left button says now PFN, personal functions. <coughs> Tap that button. And then you scroll up and down until you find, in the case of the slave's backlight color, personal function 04. Are you guys who are trying to change that up, tracking that? If you don't remember, just email me, sill at sillarena.com, and I'll point you back to it. Okay? All right, now, same thing, personal function six. Personal function six gives us the ability, if you have one 600 and a bag full of 580s, and your transfer plan is to buy one 600 every couple of months and sell a 580, no worries. You don't have to go when you hit the wireless button. You don't have to push three taps to get into Optical Master. You can go to Personal Function 6 and say, just go straight to Optical. Or you only have 600s, and you never need to go to Optical anymore. You say, OK. You pick Option 1 up on the screen, and you just go straight to Radio. So you're either in Radio Master, Radio Slave, or you're out. or you're Optical master, optical slave, and out. Okay? So uh, if you have a 600, why would you ever use optical? Is there a reason, a purpose for that? Because you only have one 600, and you have five 580s. Okay, so if you're mixing. So if you're mixing. So the, the, if you have only radio-enabled lights, then you only need radio. But if you are shooting, the only way to get your 600 to work with prior generations of speed lights is to work them in optical mode. And the 600 will be a slave, or it can be a master. Think of it like a 580 master on steroids because of a much improved LCD system on the speed light itself, OK? Yeah? How much do you think a 580 is worth if you sell it? Um, we'll talk about how much a 580 is worth at the end of the program, because I looked last night, OK? <laughs> Great, great question. So the first question, by the way, I apologize for not repeating it, was why would you use a 600 in optical mode? So um, it's because that's the only way that you can get it to play with your existing 580s and 430s. The link light, upper left-hand corner of the speed light, tells us one of three things. And it works in literally split second. Not even a split second, it's a split, split second. If it's red, it's basically saying your master or your slave is not seeing anybody out there in radio land. Something is not right. If it's green, it means that that master sees a slave to talk to, or it says that that slave sees a master to talk to. If it's yellow, it means that it's a sub-master. So a submaster, real world example, you're a wedding shooter and you have a second shooter with you all the time. You've got four speed lights set up around the dance floor. You've both got the STE3 transmitter in the hot shoe of your camera. You've got 600 EXs in the hot shoe of your camera. And you both can control all four of these lights. You can shoot the system in ETTL because that's the way you think, and your second shooter can shoot the system in manual because that's the way that she thinks. And every time the master fires, it's going to tell the slaves to switch their mode. So in this case, radio is perfect for that kind of scenario. All right. And then when we look at group mode, which gives us the ability to turn off individual groups, if I'm in that corner photographing over to that light, I can tell it in group mode, shut that light off, and you're over in that corner, and you don't want that light in the background. So we're literally in group mode, and that's one of the things we're going to go deep into. So the link light tells us not talking to anybody, talking to somebody, or we've got multiple masters. And like I say, it knows which master turned on first. That's the master that gets the green light. All the other masters get yellow lights until the first master shuts off, and then the next guy who turned on gets the green light. He's the primary master. 
It only matters, by the way, who the primary master is when you're doing that remote triggering. When you're using a slave to fire the master, it's only the master who has the green light that gets fired by the slaves. Okay. So we're going to push through this mode, and then we're going to probably jump into our break. But in terms of navigating the wireless menu system, we're going to take it really slowly here. Because there's a number of things that we've got to think about. All right. So I want you to keep in mind, it's going to say radio wireless, and then it'll say ETTL mode. And it's going to tell you what menu I'm on. All right. And that's important, because everything up to this point in non-wireless mode, we had all the functionality on the four function buttons. But as soon as we go into radio or optical wireless, we're adding complexity to the system. But the good news is, is that everything is only literally a button push away. So I'm going to walk you through all of the buttons. First button, very comfortable with that now. You all recognize it's the Zoom custom function button. This is ETTL. So the second button with the plus or minus, because it's ETTL in this case, means flash exposure compensation. All right? And again, that's the way that you have to tell the camera whatever you determine to be what you think is the right amount of meter of light, add or subtract the amount that I specify. My good friend, flash exposure bracketing. Let's fast forward. And then, flash exposure compensation in, in multi or wireless mode, rather, affects all of the slaves equally. It's the entire system. Now, here's the great thing about this menu system. When I'm teaching it to somebody who's just holding the 600EX for the very first time, I'll tell them, in wireless mode, just keep pushing the rightmost button until you find the menu option you're looking for on the screen. There is no menu option hidden beneath the menu option, with the exception of custom functions, which are hidden beneath the zoom button. But that's the only one. So you hit menu one, it's going to take you to the very next menu. Now in the next menu, we find a really important button. Master enabled and master disabled. And I'm going to stop here and talk about this for just a moment. Master enabled means that when the shutter is open, the master flash is going to fire light. Master disabled does not mean that it's not a master. All right? Master disabled means it's still very much a master, but it's going to send the instructions to the slaves, and then when the shutter is actually open, it's not firing any light. Now, why is that? Why would we want to disable our master? It's pretty simple. If I was teaching my speed lighters intensive, we talk all morning about off-camera light and the importance of shadows. Shadows are created because a light source comes across the subject from an angle rather than straight down the top of the lens. You send the light from the hot shoe at your subject. You're lighting your subject equally from both sides, and there's no shadows. And shadows re reveal shape and depth and texture. So if I'm using a 600EX in the hot shoe of my camera, I'm a wedding shooter, and I need that autofocused assist light because I photograph in dim light, for instance, then I'm going to use the speed light rather than transmitter because the transmitter doesn't have the AF light. And I'm going to set my master to be disabled. Send the instructions to the slaves, but when the shutter's actually open, do not fire. So that's enabled and disabled. And by the way, if you look at those two little icons, it's the difference between this and this. Okay, That's master enabled. And that's master disabled, which here in LA, of course, you know, it's like a gang thing. All right? But that's what you're looking for there. OK? There's the icon up on the screen. And it says, because those three little fingers are coming out of that icon, it means master enabled. It's going to fire light when the shutter's open. OK? Because all the instructions to the slaves, even in the optical system, all the instructions to the slaves are transmitted through in the case of optical, through the flash tube. But they're all transmitted prior to the shutter actually opening. So in optical, when you have a disabled master, you're still going to see flash coming out of the top. 
but if you could slow the world down really slow, you'd see that that is flashing the Morse code instructions. But then when the shutter begins to move, it's dark. So an optical master will still fire when it's disabled because that's how it talks to the slaves. A radio master has the advantage because it talks through radio, which is invisible. It's just black, black, black when it's disabled. So that's a very important button to know about. Ratios. Ratios take a bit of time to understand. We're not going to go deep into them tonight, but suffice it to say that ratios are the way that we tell the system with multiple off-camera lights how much power to push around the system. Because keep in mind in the case of ETTL, we're not controlling the amount of flash power directly. We're telling the camera, you do your pre-flash, you do your ambient meter readings, you make an evaluative comparison, you decide on how much light is appropriate, you fire the system at that, that level. And then if I say, all right, whatever that number is, I want more light on this side of my subject than that side, I'm going to use a ratio. So ETTL all means everybody's firing at the same power. AB means that I've got an A group of slaves and I've got a B group of slaves, or because the master, if it's enabled, is always a member of group A. So I can have that master on that extra long ETTL cord off camera to create interesting light enabled. And then the slave is over there because I own, let's say I only own two speed lights. So I can use that AB ratio to determine where my shadows go across the front of my subject. And then if I have three groups, I've got a key light, a fill light, and a hair light, I can go A, B, and C. But I'll be perfectly honest, if I'm going to do three groups, Chances are I don't need to do three groups in ETTL, and it's much easier to facilitate that by shifting everything over to radio, or excuse me, to manual mode. Really easy to do it by radio. But I'm going to try for my three group lighting to do it in manual, because I'm only using ETTL when the subject to flash distance is dynamic. If my lights are not moving because they're on stands, and you, my subject, are not moving because you're standing there dutifully doing what I'm asking you to, I don't need to change the flash power. Once I get it dialed in, manual works perfectly fine for a static set. For portraits, works perfectly fine. But if I've got a long jumper running down the track and he hits the mark and I'm trying to provide fill flash, okay? Well, in that case, particularly true story, you know, grade school athletes, sometimes they hit that mark and sometimes they jump three feet before the mark or two feet after. And I'm just doing little snapshots from moms and dads and I want that fill flash, that's when I'm going to use ETTL because that subject of flash distance is always changing based upon the subject being in motion and when they choose to fly and when they don't. So getting back to the ratio button, you tap it one time, it's basically going to say ratio off. That's the same as, so we say all or we say ratio off. You tap it a second time, you're going to see right up there on the screen that it says A colon B. That's the two-group system. Pretty easy to get your head around two groups in ETTL. You press it a third time, it's going to say A colon B space C. And that's basically the three-group system in ETTL. We jump over to the fourth button, and it advances us down to the next level. Now, this is something that is radio-specific. In optical wireless, we have ratios, and in optical wireless, we have the master enabled and disabled. Menu 3 is only about radio. Menu 3 is about the channel. And there are 15 channels with the 600EXRT system. Specifically, Canon designed it to be able to be used in most industrialized parts of the world. It works in the 2.4 gigahertz range. Same place that my clicker tonight is working, same place that wireless routers, many wireless routers, cell phones, microwave ovens, not cell phones, but home wireless phones, microwave ovens, all kinds of devices work in 2.4 gigahertz. And there are 15 channels in that 2.4 gigahertz range. So you can leave your master in auto mode, which is the way that it comes from the factory, but then when you show up at the speed lighter party, Chances are some nefarious guy with red hair is going to take control of your system because it's easy to jump onto your channel. We'll talk about channel more in just a moment. 
We'll also, though, if you paid attention, get out of the factory default on the wireless ID. Wireless ID is a new concept for Canon radio speed lighting. We have to have a four-digit code in our master and in our slaves, and it has to be the same code across our system. Or shall I say selfishly, my system. Because your system should be on a different ID. So I can go from 0000, which is the factory default. So between the auto channel and 0000, if you're a neophyte, I can instantly grab control of your speed light and make it do my evil deeds. But as soon as you change the wireless ID just one digit, then I can't control it. So as long as you guys don't use my secret code that I've shown up on the screen, <laughs> that's mine and mine alone, one, two, three, four. But the key point here is really to understand that you have to go to your master unit and put in your code, and you have to go to all of your slaves. Now what this also means, however, is that there could be 10,000 Canonistas, as long as we all organize ourselves from 0000 to 9999, there could be 10,000 of us at the big Speedlighter convention, all on the same channel, and we would not screw up with each other's gear. Because you and I can be on the same channel, and as long as our wireless IDs are different, we're not controlling each other's gear. Okay? So that's a really important part. Now, Oh. Is that on the six, uh, 600 only? This is 600 only. This is radio only right now. This, all of the channel, 15 channels, wireless IDs. Great question. Is this apply to radio only? It's 600. So the, the answer is it's 600 EXRT and the transmitter STE3RT. So Canon's radio speed light system. It does not apply to the 580s and 430s. I wonder, you know, it's like I'm back in California. I look at the screen shake. I'm thinking, earthquake! I'm going back to North Carolina. Okay. There we go. Third button over, channel scanner. This is really handy. Okay, my geek meter is like going off to 12 right now. You hit channel scanner and you look at this thing for about five minutes and that somehow makes you a better speed lighter. That's, you know, micro coding as it's turning. I'm just kidding on that. But it's that wheel spins and eventually you get a report. And that report says, here's the 15 channels, and here's the relative strength on each channel. And this is Sill's luck. I'm on channel 7. And you look at the report, and it's like, oh, yeah, of all 15 channels, channel 7 is the weakest one at that particular moment. Why would it be the weakest? Be be so the question is, why would 7 at that particular moment have been the weakest? Because there was something else in that location at that time using channel 7. So if it was a microwave oven next door, if it was uh, an industrial site with a lot of wireless communication devices, because in the 2.4 gigahertz range, it's not like Canon's 15 channels are different than anybody else in 2.4 gigahertz. There's 2.4 gigahertz, and that 2.4 gigahertz range is divided up into 15 predefined channels. And every wireless device, including the clicker in my hand, for instance. So if you're working in most situations, there's not a lot of electromagnetic interference, but you go do a shoot in a factory, you go to a corporate plant, you go to a military base to do portraits of the colonel, you turn the scanner on just for giggles, so you're gonna see in that case, it's like all kinds of weird things happening. So the point being, if you leave the channel in auto, the master's gonna do its own sniffing and it's gonna communicate to the slaves that have your wireless ID coded into them, Hey, today we're talking on channel 10. Hey, today we're talking on channel 2. But if you're a control freak like I am, and you pick lucky number 7, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I'm going to look at the sniffer, and it sniffs out the channels, then you just change from 7 to any of the other guys. So in this case, it's only 5, 6 is impacted a little bit, 7 is definitely impacted, 8's impacted, and over there on 15, it's down just a little bit. But there's lots and lots of open channels, okay? So it's very handy to find out, boom, where it's at. And if you leave it to auto, it's going to just take the best channel. This master will communicate that out to the slaves with the same wireless ID. And then what do you think, of course, happens when we push that menu button? Again, a whole new layer comes up. And that's what I love about this system. If you don't know where you are, 
Just push the menu button and look at what it says and push again and push again. At most, you'll push it four times and you'll see the entirety of all the menu options available to you. You don't have to say, oh, I'm going to push this one and then look over here and push this one and hold it down for three seconds and then push it twice and then turn the button once and then I can see. That's like what it's like working on the 580, okay? Which we all learned to do for many, many years. All right. Now, if you'll recall, when we were in non-wireless mode, the rightmost button in all of those modes was sync. And we talked about the fact that we had first curtain sync, second curtain sync, high speed sync. But in wireless, that rightmost button has become the menu button. So that's my way of saying, oh yeah, sync is on four because we took it off of the main menu and we had to throw it on the back end of the train. So you hit all the way over to menu four to change your sync. Now, if you've been doing Canon wireless speed lighting for a while, you're probably already familiar with the fact that we don't have second curtain sync in wireless. I don't know why, we just don't, okay? We do have high speed sync, and I think if given the two choices, I'd much rather have high speed sync and not second curtain than vice versa, because I typically shoot in brightly lit outdoor areas. If you shoot portraits or you shoot weddings rather indoors, you might feel otherwise. But either way, even with radio, we still do not have second curtain sync. We've got high speed and we've got first curtain. So if you want to activate high speed sync, because you're shooting outdoors and you need that breath of fill flash and a bright light at a wide aperture on your lens, you jump over to menu four, you hit sync, and it either goes first curtain or high speed. And basically, it's the exact same icon in exactly the same spot right up there. OK? All right, and then menu four just loops right around to the beginning. 